In data mining, you often want to optimize parameters for some situation, and I'm going to show you some methods in Weka that allow you to do that. So these are wrapper meta learners. There are three of them. Just uh, do you remember the attribute selected classifier with a wrapper subset evaluator? And the way it worked was to select an attribute subset based on how well a classifier performed, and it evaluated that using cross validation. Well, these do the same kind of thing. CV parameter selection selects the best value for a parameter. Uh, and again, it uses cross-validation. It op can optimize various parameters, uh, accuracy or the root mean squared error. Grid search optimizes two parameters by searching a two-dimensional grid. The threshold selector selects a probability threshold, and you can optimize various parameters with that. So let's take a look first at CV parameter selection. Uh, J48, over in Weka here, I've got the Pima Diabetes uh, data set open, and I'm looking at the J48. Now, do you remember J48 has got these two parameters, C and M? And uh, we can optimize those. Let's just run it in plain mode. We get 74%, 73.8. Now, we can optimize these parameters. Coming back to the slide, uh, we can use uh, CV parameter selection. And the way we express our optimization is to write a kind of a loop. C, the C parameter is going to go from 0 0.1 to 1 in steps of 10. That'll take it right up to 1.0. And actually, if you were to try this, you would find it would fail. Because if C is set to 1, then J48 can't cope with that. So instead, we're going to use uh, C goes from 0.1 to 0 0.9 in 9 steps. To find out about this syntax, you need to use the More button. Anyway, let's go ahead back to Weka and do that. I'm going to choose CV Parameter Selection. It's a meta classifier. And uh, I'm going to wrap up uh, J48 here. And uh, my string is the C parameter is going from 0.1 to 0.9 in nine steps. And uh, I can uh, I need to add that, and that's it here. If I then leave this and go back and have another look, it still says the same thing. This is what it's doing, right? So this is the list you want. You can have several lines in this list. So if I can go, I just go ahead and do that, and it will optimize that parameter. And it will take quite a long time. I'm going to stop it now. And I'm going to be disappointed, because actually I'm going to get worse results. It'll choose a value of C as 0.1 instead of the default of 0.2. And uh, it's going to get slightly worse results, 73.4. Well, I'm going to get better luck with min num obj, the other parameter, which is called m. So let's go back here, and I'm going to go back and reconfigure CV parameter selection. I'm going to add another optimization. m goes from 1 to 10 in steps of 10. I'm going to add that. And uh, it's first, and then I'm going to do C. So I'm going to loop around M and get the best value for M, and then I'm going to loop around C and get the best value for C with that best value for M. I'm not going to do this. It takes a long time. But let me tell you the result. It gets 74.3 with C is 0.2 and M is 10. And actually it gets a much simpler tree. So we get a very slightly better result than with uh, plain J48, and we get a simpler tree. That's a worthwhile optimization. The next method is grid search. Uh, you can do CV parameter selection with multiple parameters, and it will optimize the first parameter and then the other parameter. Grid search optimizes the two parameters together, and it allows you to explore not just for a classifier, but the best parameter combinations for a filter and a classifier. And you can optimize various things. It's very flexible, but pretty complicated to set up. So let's take a quick look at grid search. And uh, you would need to study this to actually use it. So this is the configuration panel. You can see it's pretty complex. Uh, we're doing uh, X and Y. And uh, X actually is going to be the filter. We're going to optimize a number of components in the filter, the X property. 
and y is going to be the classifier and we're going to optimize the ridge parameter of the classifier that's in this default configuration we're using linear regression here which has got a ridge parameter down here this is the parameter we're optimizing and the filter we're using uh, what is that um, partial least squares and that's got a parameter called num components and that's what we're going to be optimizing so that's the default configuration in order to change uh, this configuration then you'd need to look at the more button and think about this quite a bit the last the third thing I want to look at is a threshold selector do you remember in the last class lesson 4.6 we looked at probability thresholds and uh, we find that uh, naive phase uses a probability threshold of 0 0.5 and we fiddled around with that to optimize a cost matrix well that's exactly the kind of thing the threshold selector can optimize in fact in this case it's unlikely to do better than naive Bayes, but we can do different things so I'm going to use the credit data set and naive Bayes. And I've got them here, the credit database and naive base. And I can just run that and I will get 75.4% accuracy. Now I can use a threshold selector. Let's look at the threshold selector. It's a meta classifier, of course, down here somewhere, the threshold selector. I'm going to configure that with naive base. And there are various things I can do. The designated class, I'm going to designate the first class here, the first class value. In uh, this data set, the class values are good and bad. So the first, the first class is the good class. Uh, and, uh, well, let me optimize the accuracy and see what happens and what happens is I get exactly the same 75.4 percent as I got before but we can actually optimize uh, a number of different measures here in fact these different measures the TP rate and FP rate and so on back on the slide uh, there's some new terms here the F measure and the precision and the recall remember the confusion matrix and the true TP is there so that's true pause true neg TN is uh, in the lower right hand corner of the confusion matrix the uh, TP rate is TP divided by TP plus FN we've talked about those before we haven't talked about precision recall and F measure which are commonly used measures in the area of information retrieval and uh, those are defined there on the slide for you. Now, going back to Weka, let's optimize something simple like the number of true pauses. And look, we've got 700 of them here. Isn't that fantastic? A very high number of true positives. Or we could change the classifier to optimize the number of uh, true negatives. And uh, here we get uh, 295, a very high number of true negatives. The threshold value is actually given up here up at the top is the threshold value and you can see it's chosen almost one here it's uh, tuning on one third of the data is uh, how it's uh, evaluating this so we can optimize other things precision recall and F measure as well as the accuracy okay that's it so the moral is don't optimize parameters manually if you do you'll overfit because you'll use the whole data set and cross validation and uh, that's cheating we're going to use wrapper methods using internal cross-validation. And we've looked at CV parameter selection, grid search, and threshold selection. So now it's time for you to do the activity, and we'll see you in Lesson 5.5. Bye for now.